Okay, hello everyone. Let's go ahead and take a look at mathematical induction, process, and principles. Now, when we talk about mathematical induction, let's first describe what it is. It is a logical means to prove that a conjecture or proposition is true for all consecutive integer values of the domain. Now, what exactly does that refer to? Here's one that I'm hoping that everybody recalls from our study of sequences and series. It says that the summation from i is equal to 1 to n of i is going to be equal to n times it by n plus 1 divided by 2, and this is true for all positive integer values. Now, we, when we studied sequences and series, we knew that this was actually going to be true and we proved it to be true. But what we want to do now is we want to go ahead and say, let's say for example, that we didn't know that it was true. Is there a way that we can go ahead and prove it to be so? Now, this is of course the big question is how do I prove true? How do I prove this conjecture true for all integer values in the domain without showing true for each integer value? So let's say for example, if I chose n is equal to 1, then that means that this summation is from i is equal to 1 to 1 of i. So in other words, that's the only value that you have is 1. And if I substitute that value into here, I get 1 times by 1 plus 1 divided by 2. That's 2 over 2, which is 1. Sure enough, the left and the right hand side of the equation is the same and therefore true. Now, let's do it for 2. Let's say, for example, if n is equal to 2, then I come up with 1 plus 2, which is going to be equal to 2 times by 2 plus 1 divided by 2. That's 2 times 3 over 2. That's equal to 3. And sure enough, 1 plus 2 is 3. And so what's, coming ha what's happening right now is that the left-hand side and the right-hand side, of course, are coming out true for the values of 1 and 2. If we do it for 3, it comes out true for 3 as well. But the question is, is how do we know that it's true for all of them? Without having to go through each one, because of course nobody is ever wanting to do that. Now, this is the way that you do it using mathematical induction. It says that you need to show that the, that the proposition or the conjecture is true for the first value, integer value in the domain. After that, you need to go ahead and assume that it's true for the nth value or whatever the proposition is. You need to assume that that's true. And then after that, you need to show it true for the nth plus one value. Now, why is that well, only those three things? Now, let's go through it first to go ahead and see what's happening. And then we'll go ahead and describe why this is valid. Now, the process is very, very, very strict. And you need to be able to go ahead and include this notation and this vocabulary into the proof itself. So, A, show true for n is equal to 1. And of course, this is what you would write, and we've already done it to, we've already shown it to be true. Now, what I'm going to do for the second step is I'm going to assume that the conjecture or the proposition is actually true. Then what I need to do is I need to show that for n plus 1. If I go ahead and instead of n, insert n plus 1 into my conjecture, then that means that I'm coming out with the summation from i is equal to 1 to n plus 1 of i is going to be equal to n plus 1 times it by n plus 1 plus 1 divided by 2. Now, where is that coming from? You need to be very careful. Instead of n, I'm substituting in n plus 1, which is the next term. So that means that wherever in my conjecture there was an n, I'm inserting n plus 1 instead. So notice that this, instead of an n, it's an n plus 1. Notice that instead of an n, it's an n plus 1. Notice that instead of an n, it's an n plus 1. Now, what we're trying to do at this point is we're trying to prove that this is true. We need to show that this is true. Now, how are we going to do that? The key is that, is that you have to use the given assumption that you had in the previous step. So notice what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, I know that this is true, or at least I'm going to know. I'm assuming that it's true. So therefore, I can say then that this is the same thing as a summation from i is equal to 1 to n of i plus n plus 1 because we're just adding one more particular integer value to it. And I can simplify this right here to that. So what I'm trying to do right now is I'm trying to, by substituting or reformulating the left-hand side of the equality to involve my assumption, I'm then going to be able to go ahead and hopefully show that the left-hand side and the right-hand side of step 3 of my induction process is true. So notice what happens then is that this summation from i is equal to 1 to n of i 
which I assume to be true, is n times y n plus 1 divided by 2. So notice that this part here becomes this, this continues here, I assume, and this continues here as well. And now what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to show that the left and the right hand side are equal. So I went ahead and I factored out n plus 1, and I came up with n over 2 plus 1. If I divide both sides by n plus 1, because I know that it is a positive integer value, then I come up with n, plus, n over 2 plus 1 is equal to n plus 2 over 2, and sure enough, those are equal. So, what does that mean now? By showing this to be true, by going through this process of induction, I can now say for certainty that this conjecture is going to be true for all positive integer values. Okay. Now, let's come back a little bit and step back and say, well, why is this true here? Well, first of all, why is this true? A lot of people use the, uh, the image of dominoes, let's just say. And in order for us to go ahead and say that something is true for a particular value, let's like say n is equal to 1, n is equal to 2, and n is equal to 3, if I line up dominoes, here's n is equal to 1, here's n is equal to 2, and here's n is equal to 3, in order for the part, let's say for example, that for any particular value of n, if it is true, then the domino actually falls. If it's false, then the domino doesn't fall. Okay, so what we're seeing here is that we have three different dominoes. The first one falls, the second one falls, and then the third one falls. Now, what we would like to happen, of course, is that when we hit the first one and it starts falling, that all the other ones will fall without actually having to show that each one is going to fall. So, what we do then is we say, if we go ahead and at least make sure that we actually start the first one to fall, we need to now make sure that for any particular value of n, which is the n domino, that that one we're going to assume is going to be falling as well because we started the process. And then once it gets to that step, what we need to do then is we need to also go ahead and show that the next one beyond it is going to fall as well. So that means then that once we get the process started, and if we go ahead and assume that the nth one is going to fall, and we can show then that because the nth one is falling that the next one is going to fall, regardless of which n value you choose, since the next one is going to be falling, we know that all of the dominoes are going to be falling, and therefore the proposition is true. Okay, so we'll go ahead and take a look at that idea a little bit more, I think, in class, uh, just to make sure that everybody has a very good conceptual understanding of what mathematical induction is in terms of its process, as well as in terms of its mathematical principle. Okay, so there you go, mathematical induction, proposition, given a proposition, a definite process, follow the process, and then you can show that the conjecture will be true or false based upon the results of the process. Okay, so give it your best shot. We'll take a look at it the next time that we, have, that we meet in class. And we'll take any questions at that time as well. See you later. Bye-bye.